Yeah, I think it's, it's crucial about their recovery. It's a four day turnaround and that's what it is in the World Cup and that's what we're used to playing most of our rugby like. So we have a, quite a simple routine. We have a, a game day, we have a, a review, review recovery the next day. Uh, potentially the day after that, we're gonna have a double training session or maybe a longer one just in the morning and try and mentally refresh in the afternoon. The following day, which is the game before the, the game again, uh, we get used to going through the, I guess, the preparation and the captain's run, then back in the game mode. So the key things around our recovery, we want to make sure we have uh, plenty of rest and hydration and generally get those two things right and the muscle soreness and uh, the energy levels tend to go up as well. Uh, to do that, we have a very simple uh, application on the, on the uh, athlete's phone. They go through and they tell us every day, muscles, energy, sleep and hydration and that gives us a, a wellness score. Oh, look, embrace the cold, it's, uh, it sort of can be invigorating. Uh, at the same time, today we spent a bit more uh, time warming up. So we come to the gym first, and the gym was about a recovery session more than a strength session today. So it was going through the prehabilitation exercises the athletes have, it was a self-massage, it was building into sort of a, um, a potentially a, a lower weight with a few higher repetitions and, and getting ready to go out there and, and do this session. Uh, from there we went out and the coaches actually did their, their clarity first today, which was walk, walking through and making sure they've got good game understanding before we commence the warm up. So that was part of the warm up today, which is uh, a good part of what the coaches and I do together. We try and integrate the physical side and the technical, tactical side. We spent a lot of time uh, measuring workload and so we've tried to really simplify that down. So we have some key things we look at and there's, there's five things that we pull off the GPS uh, as we go through each game and each training session. We've been tracking that now for a good number of, a good number of uh, campaigns. But I think we're really starting to refine it down now by using those five metrics and bring them into one number. So at the end of that, we know day by day how the athletes are training by comparison to a game load. And the coaches are now manipulating their training sessions based on our, uh, our chronic and our acute loads. So that, what that basically means is uh, what happens in the period of a, a seven day window, which is your acute load, or the chronic load over a larger window of time, which is usually around that 28 days. So we've been in assembly now Effectively, I guess, even though we went away and come back since the Australia series. So that was back in October. Now we're deep into November. So we've sort of got a, a good feel of how the athletes have been tracking since that start of the Australia series. We try and aim to be the most professional amateurs we can be. And that's what the girls are out. They've got families, they're working, they're studying and they're playing for their country. And what they do in their preparedness, okay, in campers can't ever be underestimated. They put in long hours, as do the coaches, but uh, I, I love seeing that and I love seeing how, how hard they work to, to keep that, that, that balance and I think that really defines the Black Ferns in a lot of ways is having that sort of that family life as well as their sort of uh, professional sporting life and it's something they, they look to the All Blacks and other teams of how they do it and I guess um, mimic may not be the right word but we try and, try and hold those high standards.